Hi, Cancer. I would like to start this reading with a message of love and peace. The card to tell you what you need to know, not what you want to know. Let's begin. Okay. So let's see here, Cancer. We're going to do the June 6, 2024 new moon reading for you. And I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. It gets this channel seen by the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so very much for doing so. So let's see here. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. All right. We are crowned here. Oh, with the Knight of Swords. So this new moon is in Gemini. Now, if we are born on the cusp of Gemini, if we have Gemini in our chart, this comes through very powerfully and very intensely. And we're going to be able to play off this energy very well. The Knight of Swords is telling us that this new moon is a time of action for us. And that makes sense. You know, the new moon in Gemini, we want we want changes, we want spontaneity, we want action. And we want, we want to connect with things. So that's going to be a very good thing. Now, do be mindful during this time. We can all, and we all do, have this tendency to think about our feelings, to like analyze things and yet not truly feel them. And with the Knight of Swords coming forward and crowning this whole entire reading, we can very much be in, okay, I've achieved this, I achieved that, like very goal-oriented, very determined, very focused. It would be very good for us, you know, career-wise or you know with personal goals that we have but it can also leave us a little bit hollow feeling so do be mindful about that it moves us then to the eight of cups reverse there's something we need to walk away from there's something that's over there's an ending that comes through that we're having a hard time with we're also having a hard time choosing ourselves during this time over the responsibilities that we have to everyone else. It doesn't mean that we're selfish or self-centered. It means that we we just need to take a little time to connect with us. The nine of pentacles, be mindful during this moon as well. We can live in the past, we can live in the future, but we have a hard time staying in the right here, right now. And so that's going to be very important. And again, that comes through with the knight of swords energy, crowning everything where we are so focused on the goals that we have, the way that we want to move forward, what we're going after, that everything else kind of pales in comparison. And then we have the devil reverse. So I just heard the devil's in the details. We can be very, very detail oriented during this time. Now, the devil represents Scorpio in the major arcana time frame from October 23rd to November 21st. There can be something here, Cancer, that you're a little bit on shaky, you know, ground with, you're questioning, you're looking, you're seeking. There's also a transformation and we see this, you know, now reiterated from the Eight of Cups to the devil. Reiterated here, there's a transformation. How do I move forward? Where is it that I want to be? And yet we're stopping ourselves. We're saying, no, I can't transform or no, I'm not going to embrace that energy for one reason or another. And I, I see this mainly because we're we're looking at the past, we're looking at the future. It's like, oh, I don't want to rock the boat. So just be mindful about that. We then have the page of pentacles in the upright position, earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. If you have earth sign energy in your chart, if you have earth sign energy in your life, Cancer, this comes through very positively. We are a student during this time of our prosperity, of our wealth, of our bounty, of our abundance, of how we move forward in, in connection with our greater desires. With the seven of wands, we can be... Uh, we can be a little bit on guard during this moon. It's kind of like, okay, what do I have to fight next? And again, that's the night energy coming through, right? Knights don't just sit there and plant flowers. Knights fight. That's their job. So with the seven of wands, we just have to be mindful that we can be a little bit like, we can be a little bit on guard, right? I always see the seven of wands like a clenched fist and it's exhausting. You just open your fist after doing that for a few seconds and it's it's exhausting. So here with the seven of wands, do be mindful of you know kind of letting some things just kind of roll off our backs we don't want to and it's not going to be our personal inclination during this time but it's going to be very helpful to us to do that now it's very interesting is that we have the king of swords in the reverse position so the thing is king of swords does make sense with this reading because the king of swords again gemini energy we're in a gemini time frame we're in a gemini moon gemini sun you know that energy is very strong here and the king of swords is very logical the one thing that we have to be mindful when we're in Gemini season, if we have Gemini in our chart and in Gemini moon, when things are aligned with Gemini, is that our 
our mind can take over and we need everything to be so rational. And I know that sounds funny when people talk about Gemini's, they always say how flighty they are, how they go from one thing to the next and unreliable, but it's different being bored, right? It's learning about something. It's kind of like you've gotten all the information you wanted to get. Now you're going to go on to the next thing. And that's that Gemini energy. When it's in its negative state, it never puts down close ties. It never builds what it really desires. It's just, you know, constantly looking, constantly searching, constantly, you know, questioning. And so we do have to be mindful about this now. Now, what's also really good about this new moon is that this new moon is conjunct Venus. So we say here in astrology, like be mindful of getting a bit of a cold heart during this moon. But then with a conjunct astrology, astrology, it, it conjunct Venus, we have that beautiful softening, that beautiful loving energy coming forward. So that that kind of balances it all out, Cancer. And that is really, really lovely. And one of the reasons why we are kind of affected by this so intensely, you can be like, oh, you know, you, good luck is coming. Things are moving forward. Yeah, they are. They are most definitely, we are so goal oriented during this time that we can move mountains. If we need to move mountains, if we needed to, you know, cross rivers, this is the time to do it, right? But we are also ruled by the moon. So where the moon lies, Cancer, is also where a bit of our personality lies or, you know, a bit of our energy lies. So with the moon in, in Gemini, it's, it's more complex than we would originally think. And it's not as, as calm as we would like the waters to be. Cancer, one of the things that we have to know about ourselves is that we like the waters to be calm and quiet and, and connected. That's so important to us. And so embracing that energy during this time can be absolutely life-changing. So let's see what spirit has to say. Now, if you're interested in entering to receive a free reading, please put a rose in the comment box below. A person will be chosen at random and announced on Sunday. So good luck to everyone. Hit the bell notification so you are notified when that video comes up announcing the winner. And if you are interested in purchasing a private reading, a private personalized meditation, or a healing, check out my website, daneharttarot.com. All right, angels and spirit guides. Here we have spontaneous, and and that just falls into alignment with this moon. You know, we want spontane spontaneity, we want change, we want vibrancy, and that's going to be an energy that serves us very well during this time. Our chakra energy, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading, and show me clearly, angels. Here we have the inner child, and the inner child is really making itself known for many signs during this time. This is the heart chakra. And it's just connecting with our inner child, connecting with our inner love, our inner compassion, our beauty. And it's, it's saying, I see you. I see you from when you were small. And I see you as you stand here, be, stand here today. And this is going to be very important for us, Kinzer, because we need to see ourselves as we've grown, as we've made choices, as we've laughed, as we've loved, as we've regretted, as, as we've lived. And that is going to be important. And so the inner child comes forward and says, I'm here. And our response needs to be, I love you. And that's going to be a very powerful thing. Our energy to be mindful of, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. We have two. So we have the Princess of Swords, which is the Page of Swords in the Rider Waite Smith deck. And we have the two of sorts. So we need to be mindful that we are going to really want things. And it's, it's, it's here in the cards. We can be a little bit stubborn. We have a plan. We want it to go according to plan. We mapped everything out. We know the way we want it to be. And with the two of swords here, it's like, hey, listen, you're going to get thrown a curveball. Spirit is going to think it's super, super funny. Are we going to be as thrilled? No, we're not. With the page of swords reversed as well, this is going to be a time where we need to be a student. We need to connect with our inner child. We we are a student more often than we would like to be. And we can question, okay, how do I move forward? Where is it that I want to be? But we need to see ourselves as a student. We need to see ourselves as learning. We need to see ourselves as connecting. We need to ask the questions and not think, oh, I need to be a master at things. You know, I need to be, you know, able to do this. You're just starting. And you might be saying, you know, Dane, I've been doing this forever. I'm not just starting. But there is something here about the beauty of being a beginner, right? It's the beauty of stinking. Like it's beauty of being really bad at something because you are new to it. 
and you are going to build that skill. You're going to move yourself forward. And that's, that's very powerful. The Knight of Swords is tenacity, determination, focus, insight. It's the hero card, right? It's, it's the fairy tale knight. It's the, the the prince riding in on their white knight, rescuing the damsel in distress. But allegorically, this is us slaying our dragons. This is us, you know, cutting through the poison of our world, ascending, elevating our spirit, and awakening the sleeping part of us that the world doesn't value as much as the other part, or we don't value as much as the other part, which is usually the sacred feminine, but sometimes it works out differently in people. And so here with the Knight of Swords, there's tenacity and there's brilliance and there's distinction moving us forward. Now we are going to be a little bit stuck and we see that again with the Eight of Cups and then the and the nine of pentacles, even the devil, all right, here, and the seven of wands, we have something and we want it to go a certain way. That's why we're being told, hey, be mindful. Things are going to head in a direction you hadn't anticipated, and that's okay. With the eight of cups, we are determined, we are focused, we are looking at things in a, a very different way, but also we keep on saying to ourselves, I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. And sometimes it's not quitting. It's like, this isn't right for me. I don't like it, you know? And it's not saying I have to eat spinach every single day for every single meal because I'm going to make myself like spinach. Sometimes you just don't like spinach. Sometimes you'd love it. it. It all depends. So being kind to yourself during this time is going to be important. With the nine of pentacles, the past is done. Sometimes that's really hard to, to see and accept. The past is done. With the, with the future, you know, it is completely unknown. A lot of times, even if, you know, I look at my life and... I look at readings that I've had. I, I love the tarot so much. And even when people would say things or I'd see things in the cards and I'd be like, well, that's strange. That would never happen. Like, how ridiculous is that? And then it winds up happening. It's always ridiculous, right? It's always something that's so far-fetched. With the nine of pentacles, you can't plan the future. You can't. You can have an idea of it. You can roughly, you know, sketch it out, but it will not adhere to to your plants, it's kind of like herding cats, right? You can't make a cat do anything. <laughs> They're going to go and do their own thing. With the devil reverse, there is a fear of transformation here. And also a fear of connecting with spirit, which is also a very big theme during this time. Because what's interesting is in the Sabian symbolism, the new moon in Gemini, okay, is shown as a robust youth changing into that of a mature thinker. Okay, a mature thinker. You go from being this robust youth, this person of just absolute action, which is where we're really good at. And then we have the king, which is going to be more of the thinker, right? We can't put ourselves on the front lines all the time because that's not going to work out well for us. You know, we're 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 kings. So with the devil, we're going through this transformation and we can be having a bit of difficulty with it. And we can also be fighting this the sense of like it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, close enough is good enough type of thing. So just be aware of that cancer during this time because it is important to us. It is powerful for us. It is going to really help us in the long run to say it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it, we do want it to be done right. So if it means we start again, if it means we practice, you know, that's what we have to do as humans, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So being aware of that with the page of pentacles, this is being a student of your prosperity, but also letting yourself open your mind and your ideas and your doors to wealth prosperity, success, and bounty. And as you do this, you're going to see that you're releasing, you know, lies and weight and, and, and doubts that you've carried that have been weighing you down, but also the sense of like, I always have to be on guard. There's going to be this, this calmness, this ease to you. And with the King of Swords, just remember, we can be really harsh on ourselves. Gemini time period is a time where, you know, we can really call ourselves out we can call other people out too, right? People can throw really mean words around and know exactly where to hit because that's a, a Gemini superpower that isn't so super. But with the King of Swords, be very mindful with the King of Swords reverse that we can be in our own heads. We can be absolutely too like caught up in things. It has to be like this. It has to be like that. You know, I, I need to get it just right. Close enough is good enough. You know, show yourself some kindness and show yourself some respect because you wouldn't expect that of other people you wouldn't be as harsh with others. Now, if you have Scorpio energy in your chart, do be mindful that can be a little bit tricky. If you have Earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, that's going to be much more, you know, kind of like you fit with that energy a lot, a lot better. Water sign, not water sign, air sign energy, 
Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, you you yo-yo back and forth. You like the action part of it. You're very, very, very good at that. During this time, Cancer, that's your superpower. Things are looking great in that regard. But here, kind of slowing things down, thinking things through, taking your time, that's going to be where you you second guess yourself. You're overwhelmed. There's doubts. There's fears. So just be aware of this. It's almost like it's almost a sense here of like, don't slow down too much because then you'll overthink and you'll trip yourself up. So just be aware of that. It moves us to our subconscious spirit message, which is blossom. We are blossoming into ourselves. It is reverse. So again, we're having this fear or we're having a resistance around the transformation of us. So just pay that some attention, Cancer, especially during this new moon. During a new moon, you set your intentions, but it's not just for the next 15 days till the full moon. It's from this new moon in Gemini to the full moon in Gemini in December. I think it's December 17th. Don't, don't hold me to that. So here we're actually setting our intentions for the rest of the year, which is wild. So looking at how you want to move forward, what it is that you want to be, how it is that you want to achieve, succeed, what it is that you're going after, that's going to be a very big thing and a very powerful thing for you, Cancer. And that transformation energy right? We're re really good at doing things, but that transformation energy can be a little bit scary. So just being aware of that. Subconscious chakra energy is personal power. This is a solar plexus chakra. You have a good sense and a good read on your gut. So that's really important. You're embracing your power. You're embracing your tenacity. You're embracing your brilliance. And that is really, really cool. Our energy to be mindful of. This is the Six of Pentacles reverse. Some things are out of balance. You're going to be able to see it more when it comes to money or what you value as much as money. Make sure that you are getting paid fairly for what you do. Okay, but not to say like, oh, like don't nickel and dime it, but also don't just simply give away your talents for free. So being aware of that is also going to be super important. With the Six of Pentacles, there's a sense here of things coming into balance, coming into a greater understanding, coming into a greater insight of things. With it reversed, we just need to be to be mindful that we're we're doing the work and we also kind of want to surround ourselves with people and situations that are also putting in the work to to evolve and change and and not just stay stagnant. It moves us to our our subconscious tarot energy, which is the high priestess. The veil is being lifted from our eyes. We are seeing things so much more clearly or we're seeing things so much more, okay, cancer than we have before. And that can be a little bit overwhelming. It can be a little bit scary. It's trusting our intuition. It's connecting with our third eye chakra, which is going to be a huge deal for us as well. And there's a real sense of how I once thought it was is not necessarily how it is. And that is going to be an important thing to realize. And the the high priestess always makes you think of the Oracle of Delphi. Spirit speaks to you, but not necessarily in the clearest of ways. So calming yourself, centering yourself, and listening is going to be very important. All right. All right, Cancer. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. So take, oh, and please note that this meditation and healing will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Cancer. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. And have a blessed moon. Bye.